Oh, right, all right, all right. What the hell is going on, everybody? We've got it here now. The big match. The round of eight. Cyril in the top left side of I am Katowice. Clem in the top right. And Clem is going to play two racks Reaper in his first game against Cyril. What a surprise. Now, interestingly, Cyril has gone hatch gas pool. So he's actually going to have the ability to go for Ling Speed very quickly, which is very nice for him. He's also going to hide a drone outside his base. Is he going for the gold? Looks like he's moving down south, hiding that as the SCV comes in for Clem. Now, this is a big match. It's the best of five. It's a rematch from Atlanta where Clem got the three to one victory. He's looking pretty damn uh, challenged this tournament is Clem. Had to play a lot of TVT, potentially his weakest matchup, but he's here back in TVZ. And he's just got far past, of course, a very close round of 12 match into the round of eight. Serral is, of course, one of the biggest obstacles in the entire tournament. Serral has looked unstoppable so far. But Serral had an easier group than Clem, one could argue. Serral definitely was the standout player for it. Him coming out in first place was no surprise to anybody. And the Reaper does get itself a kill. Serral did not drop a map in the group stages, whereas Clem got out with, I believe, it was a 3-2 scoreline. He dropped a series to Shin. He also dropped a series to Kua, his teammate. He got 2-0 there. Now he's going to try and pressure this third base. Link speed's only about halfway done. If he commits super hard, he might be able to kill it, but... It's always risky to do that. Ooh, nice little mini intercept for Serral. Serral's link speed's on the way. He's, of course, building a few more Zerglings and a third and fourth queen. So Serral, oh, he really wants to defend this third hatchery. And Clem, is he going to commit to it? I mean, I think he could keep bouncing these queens away for a while, but link speed's only about 15 seconds away. That hatchery gaining hit points very quickly. And as you can see, three Reapers. Oh, he's going to go five Reapers. Okay, okay, Clem is going hard. He, he really wants to get these kills. He's going to go for the queens right now. Bouncing the queen to interrupt its damage output. Very nicely done. Four queens take, uh, four reapers take out a queen. Can get, oh my god, oh my god, he's gonna get number two. Great damage. Oh, the fountain of blood from that queen. That was beautiful. Okay, Link's coming around for the wraparound though. Careful, careful, careful. Saril's looking for the surround. He doesn't have that many Lings though. It's only 12 Lings against five reapers. I don't think you can ever win that fight with the Zerglings unless Clem move commands. Because the Reapers are at the point now where five Lings, uh, five Reapers uh, can one-shot a Zergling if they shoot it all at the exact same time. So if Clem target fires, he can actually one-shot Zerglings. Having six Reapers is kind of nice because it gives you, you know, the ability to, you don't have to shoot at the exact same moment to counteract the regen. Oh, Queen's taking damage. Oh, Lings are on the low ground. Oh my gosh, Serral... Oh, he could block him on the low ground, but the queens are getting heavily damaged. I think the reapers just should go after this orange queen. And he's going to do it. Yeah, he realizes, look, I'm trapped. I might as well take the queen out with me on the way. Oh, get a drone, get a drone, get a drone. Maybe, maybe, maybe. He might be able to get a drone as well. Yes, he is. Dude, Clem's got a great start here. Clem managed to kill four queens, two zergens, a drone. I mean, it's five reapers. It's not a small investment. And I look at the work account, and somehow Cyril's at 45 drones in the midst of this. I don't know how he got that many drones, but I guess that's why his Zergling count was so low. He's building three more queens, so he will get back up. Oh, that's a huge, huge move. The first two Hellions go down, which means Clem does not have one-shot power right now. It means his Hellion pressure is severely diminished. This is a great start for Serral. Third command center is up inside the main base as well. Zergling's rotating around. Hellions, got to be careful. Oh my god, if he loses another two Hellions, this is a disastrous opening for Clem. Notice how he doesn't stop to shoot very often. If you try to shoot as often as you can with Hellions, they'll get surrounded very quickly. When you've got Zerglings chasing you, they're only ever so slightly faster than you. So it's really nice to be able to just pull away. Factory there with the reactor. Barracks building Marines. Overlord flying through that main base. And it looks like seeing that third barracks in the main. Not a big surprise. Third command center's floating out. 1-1 upgrade starting for Serral. Serral's playing a very standard play. So far, Liberator coming into the main base could be a nuisance. Gold base is there. Liberator sieges. Serral reaction speed. Uh-oh. Does lose two drones. Instantly builds a spore. Queen's going to move up there to try and push this back. And his Zergling's moved into the main instinctively. Of course, Zergling's not much help against a Liberator. Queen is going to be able to get a bit of damage on the Lib. And Liberator's just unfortunately one pixel away from being able to kill those drones. Hellions rotating on the south. Lair has now started, but it's pretty late, Lair. 
Does give room to breathe for Clem. Clem's gonna siege up a little bit further forward. Sporkrill is gonna push him out of there though. That's gonna get one, two, three shots. That liberated down to 100, <clears throat> excuse me, 108 hit points. Stim Marines now moving forward. Serral somehow scouts it despite Hellions having map control. Just several things. Clem will get rid of that Zergling now as he goes up to five barracks. Second factory out here at the third base and expect his armory to go down in the near future behind this. There we go. Beautiful timing for Clem. That 2-2 can start up the moment 1-1 finishes. He's already gone Widow Mines, which means it'll be a tech lab at the third base as well. That's the ideal setup for Clem these days. If he could get those queens, that would be nice. Remember, the queens were kind of late, so they don't have a lot of transfuse energy compared to normal. Overlord goes down. Perhaps a preemptive stim. Good drone pull by Saral. Clem may be a little slow to run forward and focus those down. You don't really want to lose these marines as Clem, but... Oh, he's got Widow Mines backing it up. Nice play. One queen does go down. One Widow Mine falls. The marines are heavily damaged, though. They've already been double stimmed. And nice hot pickup for Clem. Widow Mines are cleaned up, though. But he's going to rally... Oh, two SCVs accidentally here on the front. Clem will send those home. He's got a few workers on that fifth gas. Fourth command center building out front. He's going to go for a double drop up north. Liberator rotating around the left side. He's trying to exert pressure. Marine Hellbat down on the south. Liberator in the main base. Nice re-siege. SCVs get caught in the middle of the map. Serral punishing him for leaving those hanging out. Two more drones go down. Marines take out a queen on the low ground. It gets decapitated. And Clem maintaining pressure in a very nice fashion. Serral with a small baneling run by. Getting ready to try to pull his attention away. Liberator sieges around. Again, he must have moved to the north and then back to the south. Dude, Clem is so annoying with this Liberator. Marine Widow Mine in the main base as well. Doesn't have a lot of Marines though. Very good defusing of those mines. Oh, accidentally does drag that into his mineral line. Sporkrill is shutting down the Marine Mine in the main base. Ten drones go down though. Very good damage. It feels like Serral might be in trouble now. Even though he's got the gold base, Clem's finding damage. His efficiency is good. 600 resource advantage. Widow Mines in the main do get cleaned up. And it looks like... Oh, did those drops just go down? Oh, he's still got four Marines in the back. The other medevac has to leave. All the Marines that were inside it have died. Taking a base here in front of this Marine Hellbat seems like a, a brave choice for Serral. Something which may be too brave. Hellbat Marine still poking in and out. He's looking for the damage. The Marine's coming forward. Widow Mine does land on the drones. Four of them go down. Nice hot pickup. But the Widow Mines are clean. Serral regains map control. Those Banelings on the south are going to find the third mineral line. Spready, 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 spready. Nice spreadies for Clem. Bumps up a little bit at the last second. And Serral says, let's take the Sense Towers and the Sympathy Prize. Uh, six SCVs go down in total for about six Banelings, but the distraction is the main thing. I like the way Serral's just keeping him busy with small runbys. Even a Ling here picking off one or two SCVs is great. Clem trying to exert pressure here. Still at the four Marines on the north. Those Marines poking forward. Getting rid of that creep would be big, but he doesn't have a scan right now. Goes after the Overlord, but the Ling Bane pushing him back. It's a dance. Back and forth, in and out. Oh! Serral catches him out of guard! Uh, off guard, out of position. There's still one Baneling here. That one Baneling in the mineral on the SCVs could be big. Unfortunately, it blows up on a single Marine. SCVs are running away. SCVs have to fight Zerglings in the mineral line, and quite a few of these are going down. Marines have unloaded in the corner of the main at the same time. Clem does not enjoy defending. He likes to attack. But Serral has just constantly had these little pinpricks keeping him home, and look at this. Look at this! Serral moves down south with a massive Ling Bane. And he's gonna he's gonna wait here. Oh, if Clem finds it, this would be massive. Oh, he's even sending changelings to see when the army comes forward. Oh, he's hiding! Clem trying to regain control of this game by moving forwards. He's got Marines and Widow Mines. He's sending the rest of his army through the, 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 the south. But he doesn't realize in the far bottom right of the map, a mass Ling Bane army has gathered up. Clem's fourth base is only just established. Clem keeps losing mining time. Clem's getting pulled to the defensive. Oh, blows up the Widow Mine there. The Planetary does focus fire the Banelings. Nice in and out micro on the Planetary. But Clem, he needs to save this Planetary. The Zerglings were blocking the SCV repair. 14 SCVs in a Planetary Fortress go down. On the other side of the map, the Marines do get picked up into the Medevac, but there's just no pressure going on. Clem's whole army gets pulled back, and Clem is unable to reassert control. If he can't stay on top of Serral, Serral is going to explode. Serral has a hive. He's on 82 drones. His 2-2's done. He's making plus one range upgrade. He's got his infestation pit done, of course. That's why the hive's on the way. He's going to start respreading creep. Masses of tumors going out. Clem needs to get control of this game, but look at how sneaky Serral's being. He knows when I counterattack you, the first thing you're going to do is immediately... Oh, good Widow Mine hit. The first thing you're going to do is counterattack, because that's what Clem wants to do. I want to attack. I don't want to defend. My name is Clem. So Serral's being as much of a nuisance as he possibly can. He's running in here. 
splitting two Zerglings to, of course, take these Widowmine hits, or at least one of them, before the Zerglings go into the base. And there we go, Lings in the Mineral Line being a nuisance once again. Clem gets pulled home, and during this, three Widow Mines in the North cleaned up. Cyril takes his sixth base. Cyril is not letting Clem go first. Remember what Maru said in that interview we saw the other day? He said, Cyril, against the Terran players in this tournament, played strategies that everybody was... They're just annoying to play against. He said, you know, when I played against Cyril, when everyone played against Cyril, watching those games, I could tell Cyril was just trying to be as annoying as possible and do all the things that frustrate us as Terran players. Great Widowmine shot. That Widowmine has 26 kills. Units lost tab's got to be good. 3,000 or 2,500 resource advantage for Clem. He's finally getting forward on the map. But Cyril's bought himself time to get Burrow. He's got Lurkers on the way. He's got plus three Carapace, Adrenal Glands, and that big 83 Worker economy. So Cyril has got himself a bit of room. He doesn't have crazy creep spread, but then again, having crazy creep spread versus Clem is nearly impossible. Oh, Marine's trying to drop on top of those Queens. That's a dangerous move. Almost loses a Medivac there. The Queens will go down. Cyril quickly trying to spam Transfuse. Will be able to start defending that in the south. Marine Marauder coming in, but not able to continue further. A few queens go down, but I honestly think losing queens at this point is good for Cyril. Queens are a very low damage unit, and whilst they're good in the early and mid game, in the late game they become a big waste of supply. You don't need more than five or six queens in the late game. Just enough to respread creep and inject occasionally. Good spreadies there from Cyril. Immediately remorphs an overseer, something that Cyril is almost always on point with. So he's always adding those to clean those widow mines up. Ghost production's underway though, and I think no doubt a lot of people. Cyril, especially in this scenario, looking at this situation and going, hey, remember game one versus Solar? Solar had a massive advantage, which Cyril's got a small advantage right now, but not a massive one. And Clem just dragged it out to the late game and destroyed. So you can't be letting him get up to mass orbital. You can't be letting him secure this bottom base. Already even getting this gold base up could be a big problem. You can see more command centers going down for Clem. Two more command centers, which will probably both be orbitals. And Clem's late game has really stepped it up a notch recently. Up in the north of the map, we've got the Widow Mines there. They do. Oh, nice Widow Mine smear. Good pullback by Clem in the north. Oh, Parasitic Bomb does take out a few Medivacs in the south. Oh, enough Hydra Bane to chase him away. And that's what you want here. As Serral, you want to clear these Widow Mines. You really want to chase him all the way back to his side of the map. But with no Zerglings left, Serral does pull back for now. What's he just... Oh, he's got an Overseer in the back. Overseer in the back. Nidus Worm. Nidus Worm in the rear with the gear. Clem has not noticed it. He just had a few Marines and Marauders pop out. Okay, he notices it now and he does react. He should be able to take that down just a second after it pops. If not before then, no, great reaction speed does shut that one down. In the north of the map, looks like Clem cleans up a bunch of Banelings. Maybe a Widow Mine going off there. Another Nidus Worm in the back of the natural is being a nuisance. You need to get a Viking up there. Where are the Vikings right now? If he doesn't get Vikings, Cyril's just going to keep popping these Nidus Worms because right now he's got an Overseer in the back of the natural. He can throw it there or there and one in the back of the main. Clem is not building a Viking and that is such a big mistake. Serral's going to attack him on the front right now, and that's going to distract him, which means a Unitis Worm's going up. A full Medivac gets abducted and sniped down. Unitis Worm in the back of the main. He's building turrets on the edge. That's not going to stop the Overseer that's already there. Oh my god, Clem with a big mistake here. Not getting a Viking. Serral putting on too much pressure for Clem to deal with. And Clem leaves the opening, and look at all those depots. Look at these buildings that'll go down. The armory almost certain to fall as well. What's he coming up with? A few Marauders. Okay, he has to split a giant section of bio to defend. And Serral, looking ready to poise somewhere in the center of the map at the same time. Maybe going for that gold base. It's a really great call if you could do that. Serral, he does reposition the lurkers down here. He says, okay, you dealt with the main. No worries, I'll pop into the natural. Getting even more SCV. So much more damage done. Uh, I think the armory did survive, by the way. So it looks like plus three vehicle weapons will finish. The lurkers are going to go down. But at the same time, he's going to go and blow up that gold base. Bailing fungal! Oh my god! Oh my god, Serral! Okay, wow. Look at this, guys. He's dealing with the lurkers. Serral pushes towards the gold base, which is a bait. I mean, he wants to kill the gold base as well, but it baits him down here. And then Serral's like, oh, I can kill the gold and I can kill that entire section of Marine Ghost. Ooh, not letting Clem get established. What a beautiful game. We have to point out a few of these details, guys. Right from that first Baneling run by into the third... Every time Clem wanted to get across this giant map and be the one who was completely in charge of the game, I think it was about eight minutes, those speed veins. Maybe maybe nine minutes, actually. It's, it's, it's a little bit later. Um, he just did not let Clem go first, right? Look, the, these Zerglings here, he morphs Banelings, and he rolls those into that base while Clem, Clem's attacking, attacking, attacking. Serral's just defending. And this is the first counterattack, right? 
The first serious counterattack, other than, say, the Hellions around in the early game, doesn't get a crazy amount of damage. But it's what he does any time he pushes Clem back. He forced that drop back. What does he do? Splits a big packling Bane across the map. Gets ready for another counterattack. And suddenly he's saying, you can't just focus on the front and attack me in three places there. You also need to defend at home. And he did this multiple times in this series. And he just kept these layers of pressure up. These layers of pressure over and over and over again. And just fantastically well done. I think the genius one was hiding down the bottom of the map here at 10 minutes. Because he pulled him back with some run buys. And then Clem's whole army moves out, which is kind of predictable. Clem just wasn't checking his corners. And you need to do that against these Zergs, especially when, when a Zerg's been counter-attacking him all game. He has to realize, Clem does, that they've, they've identified they're going to try and take advantage of that old weakness of his, which is he's god-tier when he's attacking. And he's good when he's defending, but he's not as god-tier. And he needed to just send some Marines down or build, like, depots or have a Widow Mine down here. Have a Widow Mine up here. Or maybe, uh, I guess, on the north, you'd want the Widow Mine here to see when this Ling Bane's coming in because you need time to react. Losing that base and that 15 SCV slowed him down massively. And this is just so technical by Cyril. I do think Clem made a big mistake by not dealing with those Overseers quicker, though. Letting those two Overseers get in position and still not reacting to it was such a huge mistake. Because the thing is, the first Nidus Worm, immediately he reacts pretty well. Watch this from Clem's vision. He does pull units. Where's the Viking? He's got money. He's got supply. If he just adds a Viking... It can immediately build. It's out in 30 seconds. Clean that up. Put some turrets on the edge as well. And then go along the edges and clean this one as well. You have to stop his ability to keep popping these up. You can't just be like, cool, I defended Nidus Worm. Now I move across the map. But he kind of kept trying to do that. Clem got stuck in that kind of, oh, I dealt with it. Go counterattack. I dealt with it. Go counterattack. But he didn't deal with the future potential. He's got a Widow Mine here, which is nice for some future potential for run by on the south. But he really needed to deal with the Nidus Worm potential. And not doing that really cost him this game. GG's. All right, going into game two, we've got Clem in the bottom right side of the map. He's gone for a very standard Reaper expand. His SCV's just come over, seen the early hatchery of Serral. And what's interesting is we're not seeing Serral go 15-15 at all. And look at this, he's sending two drones out because he knows Clem's going to follow it. Oh, very nice move. And he's like, oh no, you blocked me. Oh no. Now his drones could attack the SCV. So I'm trying to keep everything in picture at once. Nice micro in the natural though. Oh, he's going to lose at least one Zergling. Oh, he didn't attack with the drone. That's interesting. This drone circled around. Oh, he's trying to get it home without the Reaper seeing it. Oh, Serral. Oh, Serral! Oh no! Oh, a rare mistake there for Serral. We'll lose a drone. Oh, the Reaper killed it mid-air. That was awesome. Clem, the kind of cat that focus fires a drone as its friggin' graphic is sailing through the air. Beautiful. Clem, well done. Well done. And he forces Serral to take the triangle. Now, arguably, taking the triangle is not too bad because you can get your creep down here above this ledge nice and early, but this ledge over here on the left is a scary position. And uh, I personally do prefer that third base, but there is an argument that taking the riskier base earlier means you get your creep spread out in front better, and then you take the safer base later, which, you know, is easier to defend, um, which is actually kind of cool. Reaper is being a nuisance because his name is Clem, and that's what he does. Very annoying with his Reaper micro. Uh, he has gone Starport Tech Lab behind his third commands and a very standard opening for Clem. Creep still spreading out here. This would take a lot of attention and, and, and real frantic play for most people and micro. For Clem, this costs him nothing, remember, guys. Because he's, he's just that fast. He can do this without stressing himself. He's going to go Banshee. Okay, Banshee's coming in behind it. Not a bad opening. Ooh. Queens get bounced. Zergling gets in and sees everything. Serral, very nicely done. Already with the Overlord, seeing no depots on the wall off at four minutes tells you that your opponent has gone three command centers. You should see him starting depots now. Clam. <laughs> that depot's kind of... It's its almost late. I was like, if he waits any longer, he's going to get supply blocked on 61. Oh, man. I had this giant burp building up for the last, like, two minutes. I, I Finally, it came out. Me with my, uh, my muting the microphone right on time. Very proud of myself for that. I don't know why. It's basic etiquette, and 
Yet I'm like, I feel like I should get a pat on the back. Didn't burp into the microphone. I think it's just because I there's too many streamers who are just out there eating into their microphone, like quote unquote reacting to content all day, you know? <laughs> They're just like, nom, nom. <laughs> And you're just like, can you not? Can you at least mute the microphone while you're eating in front of it? Jeez. Or you could, you know, eat off stream. That too. Anyways, my pet peeves aside, Banshee's moving to the right. Hellion's on the left. Sarah's got decent control. He's got spores building everywhere. First Banshee gets... Oh, no, 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 Clem. Clem. Why is he going back in? I guess he knew the queens were going to pull back for the Hellions. Crazy, man. Oh my god, if he committed in there, that would that would have been very dangerous and very bad. There's a lot of Zerglings out, 18 Zerglings on the map. And she actually gets some decent damage on this fourth base. It's a wild move, man. Queens are going to come out to defend it. The Overseers are morphing, but or at least one Overseer is, but it's not here just yet. Oh, I like the way he splits that Queen off with the, the Reaper Grenade. It's actually really cool, but the Overseer is going to arrive any second. Now, you got to get out of here, Clem. Clem? Clem? Unnecessarily risky from Clem. Oh my god, trying to get extra hits off. He's so greedy. He's so greedy because he saw the queens with energy were off creep, so they couldn't transfuse. And he saw that low energy queen and he was like, oh, I bet I can kill this. 1-1 one, one is on the way. Fourth and fifth barracks. Serral's playing single Evo Chamber. Second Evo Chamber does go down now. Very awkward positioning, but you can tell Serral's been on the back foot with the harassment. So he just had extra drones here. So he's done what I call the dark Evo Chamber placement, which is randomly wherever your screen happens to be or your drones happen to be. He's going to transfer drones to the fourth. The natural is undersaturated. Serral, 69 workers. Clem only on 55. Units lost tab is in favor of Clem. He's only lost that SCV so far. The second Evo chamber comes up. Serral needs to remember that. He's usually very good at remembering upgrades. Yeah, perfect. Scan goes down for Clem. Why is he scanning? Oh, was he wondering if it's roaches? He might have been wondering if it was roach play because he's only seen queens and a few zerglings so far. He might be like, oh, maybe it's a big mass roach play. It feels a bit too late to be scanning for that. The other option is maybe he was worried about Spire, but Spire has been very rare on hard lead. You'll usually only see Spire on Golden Aura or Equilibrium, the, the bigger maps where the Mutalisks have a lot of room to work their magic. Oh, oh, several you sneaky bugger. These Hellions move up just a little bit. They will see it. But if they don't see it, those Banelings are going to come in from a surprising angle. Marines running forward. Combat shields in 1-1 one, one isn't quite here yet. Nice pressure from Clem. Nice pressure from Clem. Gets himself a queen with the Widow Mines and the Marines adding a little bit of firepower. But good defuse on the second Widow Mine. And Clem is pushed back for now. Got Drilling Claws on the way. Oh, Banelings run in. They managed to kill only a single Hellion. Units lost up. Still looking great for Clem. Clem's on 70 workers. Does he not have a fourth started? Guys, he doesn't have a second factory or a fourth base. What's going on? Wait, he, oh no, he does. It must just be in a different location. Okay. Ooh, good save there. Sorry, where are the two factories, guys? I gotta check this out. Oh, they're both in the main. I mean, players sometimes do get sick of losing their factory out front their third base. Good job keeping the Banshees on defense, by the way. That's their main goal, is to be defensive uh, power boosting units all game. He's also putting some Widow Mines out on the edges. After game one and all those run-bys him, causing him trouble, having a little bit of extra defense is a good idea. Serral getting Baneling. Oh, Baneling drops. He's got Baneling drops getting ready. Very nice. Hellbat Marine Medivac on the right side. We've also got Bio Mine on the left as well. He should be able to push through this left side if he's able to commit enough of his micro to it. Oh, good Baneling it and drags a Widow Mine in for friendly fire. But Clem punishes Serral on the right side, takes out a couple of queens. That hatchery is also getting incredibly bruised. Clem's going to dive in on both sides. The opportunistic madman. Hatchery in the top right will go down. Bailing. Massive bailing hits. Clear it up. On the left side, looks like a few marines went down, but 16 of them do get saved going into the main base. Clem here, he didn't manage to kill that fourth on the right side. Somehow it just barely survived. Bailing drop coming in back at home. Nice micro for Clem so far, though. Ba transfusers do go down. The base is still alive. You could tell Clem wants it. He's sending more marine mine over there. The drop dancing around the rear line. Bailings do come in, but it looks like Clem is aware. Ooh, but there's another bailing drop coming in behind it. He's going to take out only two marines with this, and the overlord has to drop the other bailings just to secure its own exit. On the right side, bio mine coming in yet again. Looks like the Ling Banes tried to slow this down. They've done a pretty good job so far. Widow mine does not fire up front. The second one only hitting a few zerglings. Bailing drop! Unfortunately, Serral misclicked it in the chaos. Clem keeping the pressure on, forcing Serral to make a mistake there. Only five SCVs going down. If Serral had unloaded that here or here, 
he would have killed a lot more, but he unloaded it behind the mineral line and the Banelings did not blow up optimally. Bio picking up in the center, Widow Mine. Should have got a better shot than that off, but of course, Serral is so quick, he cleans it up easily. Bio Mine coming forward. Clem is going to bring the Banshees in here as well. That's a bad move. Those Banshees will go down instantly. A uh, bit of a bummer to waste those Banshees that are so good on the defense, but not good on the offense now that Hydras have joined the fray. Hydras. Oh, these Metavacs taking a lot of damage. Double drop in the back of the main base as well. They're not really hitting a high value target. It's just a few very damaged Marines. Some who didn't even have the hit points to stim. The other Marines in the south get shot down. Both Metavacs going down. Clem is playing fast and loose right now, trying to get damage. But it is Serral who is maintaining control so far and shutting down Clem's momentum. Yes, Clem's in his face. He is trading better. And he's finally going to get the hatchery. He does. Oh, ho, ho. That was a hit, an amazing hot pickup. But once again, Serral's defusing of the Widow Mines has been exceptional. We're seeing 3-4 Widow Mines. Serral's running into it with a massive blob of Zerg. And somehow he's always pulling away the units that have the Widow Mines tracked onto them. The, the visual acuity, the mouse precision, and the calm under pressure, second to none. Plus three attack is on the way for Clem. He's up on eight barracks now. He does need to get tech labs on those three bad boys and then go for the concussive shells to round out his three base, uh, four base production. Fifth command center is on the way right now for Clem. He's on a good work account. Bio mine is not burrowed right now. What is this push for Clem? The Widow Mine's caught unburrowed. Serral's going to pounce on it. Dude, you give Serral any moment of being unprepared. He's going to jump on you, and he routes this position. This Watchtower was an amazing amazing siege location for Clem. You can tell Clem feels the pressure to push in because Hydras are out. If you, if you take too long against Hydras, the Hydras will just clean up your Widow Mines, and then when you go forward with your Bio, the Banelings will come in. But Serral now counterattacking. The bio trying to pull back, forcing a hot pickup. Widow Mines, is he finally going to get a big one? No, once again, only three or four Zergans go down. Planetary on the left is secure. Army drops on the right. Baneling's mispathing. Serral quickly corrects it. Nice save. Ling Bane controlling the right side of the map. Serral has denied both Watchtowers from Clem. This map is all about Watchtower control and, and, and really denying everything on these edges. Serral's creep does suck balls right now. Um... Sorry, Sucks Disruptors. I'm sorry, guys. Sucks Disruptors right now. Two Infestors are on the way as well as Burrow. Plus two Carapace coming in. Plus one Rangers on the way as well. Look at Den. Halfway done. Hive's almost finished. Empty Medivac goes down. Clem has a ton of Medivacs. He's starting to build Libs, Marauders, and Concussive Shells. Only one Marauder building. He forgot his Tech Labs! Oh my god, it's been over a minute and he still doesn't have the Tech Labs. So he thinks he's queued up Marauders, but he only queued up one... Oh, that is a real bummer there for Clem. Marauders coming into your bio mine game are so important for slowing down the Ling Bane and tanking the Baneling hits. Widow Mine's there, a few bio units coming forward. The Baneling's going after the workers. Lovely emergency spready for Clem. And he does minimize the damage. But nonetheless, when you force a Terran to do this, there are so many actions the Terran has to do. Lift base, land base, put workers back on gas, put workers back on minerals, uh, reassert this. Oh, my, I pulled my army home for that. Now send my army back forward. Anytime you do little run-bys like this, a lot of Zergs get trapped in the mindset of thinking it's about, oh, well, seven Banelings costs more than nine SCVs, so that's not a good trade. That's not how it works. TVZ is about momentum. And that's what Serral reclaimed a little bit of by pushing Clem back. Hatchery does get canceled. That Widow Mine got a decent hit, 12 kills on it. Hydra Bane on the left. Double Lib comes in, but they're sieging in range of a Spore Crawler. Serral pretty happy with that. Those Hydras now going to show themselves. Liberators. Oh, they were queued up. Clem not watching. The Liberators both go down to the Hydras over in the middle. Infestors are lurking. Infestors lurking. Not worth showing it just yet. Hydra Bane's going to pull away. He tries to defuse the Widow Mine. Clem quickly unburrows. But oh my god! The unburrow fungal in the midst of everything else that is happening. I told you guys it's about the momentum. Well, guess what? Serral has just pushed a tidal wave of momentum back onto Clem's shoulders. Clem's back is going to break if he does not do some heavy lifting in the next minute or two. He does have a lot more orbitals coming up. He's hanging on okay if he can just recover because he's got three commands in his building, but he's got to recover. And look at this, another Widow Mine defused. Serral is so astute at, at just defusing these Widow Mines with single Zergans. A single Burrowed Zergling here giving the middle finger over his shoulder saying, you can't land here, D-Bag. You don't have a landing permit. Oh, good Widow Mine hit. Does punish Serral. One of the few ones we've seen actually land in this game. And once again, you can see he's aware of the Widow Mine and he does get a Lurker Siege on the left side. 
No adaptive talents just yet, but he's got pretty much every other upgrade under the book. Plus three carapace and plus two ranger, almost done. Hydra Bane rolling in the right side, the Widow Mines and the Banelings. Oh my god, the Widow Mines just shot down the medevacs as they picked up the units to evacuate. Clem was on the back foot and Serral routes him and sends him home. Ooh, very, very nice play for Serral, just not letting Clem get the momentum that he needs. If I had to break it down here, what was the big thing that allowed Serral to take control of this game? Well, if we look at the early game, I think it was just a, a very straight up early game between the two of them. I think we need to go to the first Marine pressures to really think about it, because I'm thinking about this in my own head, like what, where did the momentum shift? And, and I mean, the work account looked very good early for Serral, for sure. Maybe this is a little late. I, I don't know for sure the exact timings, but I think maybe this first marine pressure was a little late. Despite that, I think he microed well enough. But I think really it was just defusing Widow Mines and cleaning them up. And never letting Clem hang on to a frontal position. Even though that Baneling run by did nothing. Clem, even though he was able to drop, come in, stim, pick off a unit or two. He wasn't able to bait you into Widow Mines. There was very low Widow Mine recycling in this game. And if I had to point out the biggest mistake of Clem, I would say it was the big push over here where like seven, a bunch of Widow Mines got caught on Burrowed and a lot of his army went down. It's always hard to say in these sorts of games because there's so much going on and there, there's, you know, what was the crucial thing that throws a player off their game or catches them out? That fourth command center is stupid late as well. Let's be honest. That fourth command center is very late, guys. Starting this, this fourth command center at like 8.10, Serral's already on 82 workers, so that command center was not nearly as fast as it could have been. I mean, don't get me wrong, having extra workers is not bad, because as a Terran player, you've got a lot of workers that tend to be building depots, building other structures, sensor towers, turrets, command centers. Having a few extra is nice, but I do feel like that fourth command center is pretty late as well, which means there's more pressure on him to do damage. And even though he was trading pretty well, he does at a few points get ahead of himself and start, like, losing drops and stuff, like... At some, yeah, so, so, yeah, Th this one here is actually huge. This moment was probably potentially game deciding. That hatchery surviving and him killing the whole army there. And then you think, well, doesn't the double, double drop do damage? Not really. It kills a queen and that's it. And Serral just handles the redrop so very well. Well, you'd think, well, no, no, no. Clem with the next wave is going to get him to make mistakes and like... Not really, guys. Look, the Widow Mines just aren't doing that much. He finally gets a decent Widow Mine there. It's only five kills. It's not even that good. And Clem gets only two drones here. None of these are spiraling the way Clem wants them to. I like this move to kind of clear creep, but then once again, defuses the mine. Once again, cleans the Widow Mine. It just feels like Serral's so quick at cleaning up the problems. Clem's basically trying to run around Serral's house and light fires. And... And Serral's just there with a fire extinguisher shaking his head. Going, no. No, you friggin' idiot. And this was huge. This was a huge moment as well. Because Clem feels desperate to get damage. And you think, oh, that's that's decent. He's distracting him in the back with the Marines. But no, no, no. Serral prioritizes really well here. Sends his, his sends some units up north. But he takes out both medevacs. And that is massive. He loses a queen for it. Two, actually. Does he lose three? Oh, he loses three queens. That's kind of crazy. But he's got eight queens still, so honestly, it's not the end of the world. And then he cleans up all the Widow Mines on the right. And even though he loses the hatchery, I don't think it matters at this point because he's got five bases mining. So he's like, oh, I'm back to four bases for a little bit. That's that's fine. Despite this, Clem's still ahead in supply. And he still could do well. But at 10 minutes 40, the barracks finish and he doesn't get the tech labs in time. So being low on Marauders is big. And then this push is the next one where he's kind of shoving forward... And then he's like a little bit clumped here. And look at this. Defuses a Widow Mine. That one only hits a few Zerglings. Those three Widow Mines don't shoot. Those two Widow Mines fire on single Zerglings. That Widow Mine doesn't shoot. Frigging bomb defuses Serral right here. So impressive. Okay, you need to dig deep right now, mate. Clem is in the top right of Alcyon. And he's looking pretty dece. But man, uh, Serral is just on another level. He's putting out the fires faster than Clem can light them. And then the moment he gets a chance, he's putting that pressure back onto Clem as well. Um, defending that third base was the crucial moment. The third base, baiting Clem in, 
Cyril blowing up his entire Hellbat Marine army and keeping his third base alive, or fourth base. I think it was his fourth base, actually. It was a huge, huge moment. But then Clem also just throwing it, sending drops into the back line of Cyril. And it's not even like there were big mistakes by Clem. It was just that Cyril defended them so well and started shooting down a lot of medevacs. And that really started to cost Clem as the series went on. So a few massive just plays by Cyril on the defense and his ability to handle the chaos was amazing. Um, defusing Widow Mines on all sides just constantly. And there really is like in Zerg versus Heron, I, I say it's a momentum war. If you haven't played it at a high level, it's kind of hard to explain. But basically there is a constant battle between who's on top of the actions and who's leading the dance and who's following and it's very hard to follow and it's why you know these are some of the guys who are actually capable of coming back when they are following the other one when the other player is leading them guys like clem Cyril, rayner um dark because they're, they're just that fast and they're that intuitive and good that they can somehow like regain control and like soul is the best actually in the world at just following he's all he always lets the terran lead and he's like that's fine I only practice basically being the, the defender. But um, guys like Clem Cyril, Clem Rainer, you're always going to see them fighting for momentum. If you're like, oh, you have to deal with the Zergner armor. Game one was the perfect example of Cyril just basically leading with Ling run by, Bane run by, Big Ling Bane bust on the fourth, more Ling run by, more Ling run by, Nidus in the back while attacking on the front, attacks the, another position on, on the, the south while doing another Nidus worm in the back. Like that, that was a perfect example of Clem's always like reacting and he's always one step behind. And then, bam, you're giving him the next problem before he's ready for it. And this often manifests in a way where people say, no, 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 but Zerg's always defending Pig. What are you talking about? Okay, so in that last game, the example I would give, as Clem's doing a very good job of blocking this, by the way, the example I would give is that, well, it's not necessarily about, oh, you're going to do Ling Bane run buys, but you're cleaning up Widow Mines while Clem's busy dealing with something else. And he doesn't have the micro or the attention to unburrow the Widow Mine or... To, to move some units forward to kill those Zerglings. And you're like, okay, cool. I cleaned up the Widow Mines here. Now your attention's over there. I'm already cleaning up Widow Mines somewhere else. Okay, now you're microing this drop. I'm shutting it down. And then I'm clicking Banelings in your base. While you're dealing with that Baneling run by or that Baneling drop, I'm cleaning up more Widow Mines on the left side of the map that don't have any units stationed near them. Whereas in a game where like we've seen, uh, I cast a game recently where Rainer and Clem played the Weekly Cup and um, Rainer was kind of like so far behind in one game. He just like could never clean the Widow Mines up. And they were just firing over and over again because Reyna was like five steps behind in this game. And it was actually impressive how well he almost came back. But yeah, big Ling run by. Oh, this is old school. Once again, he's just going to put, put Clem on the defense. This is classic countering play. This is, you like to be aggressive. You're a God tier aggressive player. I'm just not like, I'm not going to let you play your game. I'm going to wait for the third and fourth Hellion to move out. I'm going to run in and surround. Now, if those Hellions stay at home, that's really good for Clem. Honestly, leaving them at the front, though, is a really bad idea because you've got very little time to respond. Reaper goes for a scout. These Hellions run back. Oh, and he's moving them out. Lings are going to go in now. They should click in right now. Yeah, perfect timing for Sarah. Oh, he's so good. He's so bloody good. And look, Clem thinks he's being annoying. Oh, no. Oh, Sarah accidentally pulls back. He should have ran up the ramp. I guess there's enough SCVs trapped down here, actually, that it maybe doesn't matter. Oh, that is so much damage. He's got to focus those SCVs with some of his lings. Ah, oh, the ling's not micro. He's got, to, he's got to get those red hit point SCVs, finish them off. So many juicy targets in there. Oh my god, this is massive damage. On the other side of the map, the Hellion's poking in. The Queens are clearing those up. Sorry guys, shouldn't show that until the fight's over. Bad habit of mine when I, I'm really curious to check. So nine SCVs for 16 Zerglings and pushes them home. Clem answers with two drone kills, which is something. Not as much as he needs. An Overlord to kill as well is not too bad there with the Liberator and the Marines. Cyril is supply blocked. And Cyril spent a lot of money on those Zerglings ahead of time to get that damage. But he's going to keep doing it. Oh, what a cheeky bugger. There's only three Marines there. If he can kill those Marines with a surround, he can get more SCVs. Because what does Clem do after defending a counterattack? He immediately goes across the map to be aggressive. He does this all the time. Nice Marine positioning. Oh, good Marine positioning. Oh, but a Zergling even gets on the flank. I can't believe he got a link through the mineral line to surround that. That was very cute. And the links are going to try to pick off an SCV here. But the Hellions are back. The links will go down. Once again, just pulling his attention away. And look at that. Liberator flies in. Sporkrill is there to greet him. Could try sieging from here just to get like two drones. Bit dangerous though. One one's on the way for Serral. He's playing a greedy boy build behind this. Another Ling run by. You got to be ready for this one, Clem. Don't chuck a Maru. 
Don't chuck a Maru versus Dark from MC7. Oh, okay. This time he is ready for it. If, if you make the same mistake three times in a row, like first time, that's totally normal. The second time they do it, you go, okay, fair enough. You got me. If you make the mistake the third time, it's it's actually, as a pro gamer, you feel straight up embarrassed when you watch that game later. You're like, he's doing the same move over and over. I mean, falling for it twice is fine. Three times is very embarrassing as a top tier player. And good micro by Serral. Liberator damages the queen, but does not kill it. Who's ahead and behind here? If we look at the work account, Serral is quite ahead uh, from those run buys in terms of the workers. But as long as the aliens don't throw their lives away, I think Clem can definitely still make a, a decent push. His first two medevacs looks like with Stim. He'll have a, a nice little marine medevac pressure, probably around the seven and a half minute mark. Not particularly early, but as long as he stops Serral from droning this fourth too fast, I think he's okay. Serral's making a lot of Zerglings right now. Is Serral going to keep making Ling Bane off 67 workers? That would be wild. But he's set up for another run by, and, and there is a, a 60 drone mass Ling Bane style people play sometimes. So he's basically making enough army to just shut down the pressure when it arrives. And he's going to counterattack with these guys as well. Yeah, yeah, he's sending even more. He should morph Banes, I think. I guess because he doesn't have Bane Link speed, he doesn't really care for it. He might just go pure Zergling run by. But if he can surround the units there, split some Lings in the third mineral line, this is huge. But he's learned his lesson. There we go. Clem learned his lesson. He should be ready for this. Clem, he's not watching. He's busy on the front with the Hellion Marine. Oh, no. He learned his lesson, but he wasn't paying attention. Clem, very slow response. Good Marine micro. He does pull behind the mineral line. The SCVs. Plus the Marines do defend. Good crisis management for Clem. Good crisis management. Aliens and Marines are going to defend that third. Fourth command center starts at a more crisp timing this game. It was quite late in the last one. Two twos on the way. Serral's still only on 69 workers. He's actually not playing a high worker count game. Which means he needs to keep doing damage. He knows where the Widow Mine is, so he, cir he circuits around it. And look at that, Clem's like, screw you, I will hunt these units down. Good on him, he's going to hunt them down. What's he doing? Oh, he's going for the Overlord. I mean, that's fair enough, but you got to go for the actual Zerg. Mate! Clem! Oh my gosh, you know there's bait! Oh, come on, Clem! You, you, oh man, he's so focused on attacking, he didn't clean up the Zerglings. Oh no, oh, big, big swarm for, for Serral. But good pullback by Clem. He's got a Widow Mine on that left. Trying to bait him in right now. Oh my god. If, if this Baneling run by does big damage, this is a big, huge mistake for Clem. Baneling's coming in from that left side. No, they're just chilling. Wait, they're just chill He's going to come around the front? Oh, he's going to try and roll in the front. Clem sees it. Clem sees it. Clem sees it. He's got to react. And it looks like he should be able to get those SCVs out of there in time. Banelings take out a few Widow Mines, but they aren't going to be able to hit many SCVs. Good defense there by Clem. But man, Clem's making it a little bit dicey. Two Widow Mines are now on the left. Two Widow Mines in the center. Army on the right side. This has given Serral a lot of time to get established. Hydra upgrades are on the way as well as the infestation pit. Keep in mind, it's still neck and neck. Serral has committed so much to these run buys. He's actually not ahead right now. All he's done is psychological damage. Clem has been forced into a more defensive mindset because of the way Serral has played. And, and that's kind of good because obviously Clem does his best work in the mid game when he's aggressive. But... I don't think he's bad in the late game. He could definitely beat Serral in the late game. Think about Alcyon at Atlanta. They had the most epic map of that tournament there. I think it was game three in Atlanta on this map that went down to the wire. Dropping next to Banelings, very risky there for Clem. Banelings do clean up some of the Marines on the left, some of the Marines on the right. He loses one medevac's worth of Marines on the right, only a few Marines on the left. Sorry guys, trying to show both fights at almost the exact same time, always tough. Shout out to the production at the live event, by the way. We had picture in picture for a lot of these situations. And the guys observing it in the production team were incredible at catching two things on screen at once, so. Bio mine coming forward. Marines going after these banelings. Oh, there's not enough to take out the planetary, though. Great hold. Great hold. He defends his fourth. That was a bit of a, a half-cocked counterattack there for Serral trying to attack the, uh, the, the planetary. Marines and Widow Mines doing what they can. Nice hot pickups here for Mr. Clement. Clement. Does take out the drone in the bottom right side as well. 88 workers for Serral. This hive's almost there, but it's not out yet. Clem's ahead in supply. Clem's in, in the lead now, I would say. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of command centers, but his fifth is building. Maybe not in the lead, but he's definitely in a pretty decent position. He does need to start plus three. As I say it, he does start that up. 
That will maintain at least a small upgrade advantage window for Clem. Another Widowmine fires, but the Widowmines are getting cleaned up. cyril has been doing a really good job of this. And that's one thing, because Clem's so focused on repositioning constantly, he's actually le leaving the Widowmine fields to get cleaned. And that's something Cyril's doing very, very well. So I think there's an argument behind maybe he should be just maintaining a position in the middle. Let those Widowmines recharge by defending them with your Marines so they can't be defused by single Zerglings. And, uh, and that might actually cause more problems for Cyril. Lurkadon and Vipers are on the way. Marine Widow Mine here going to catch a lot of this Ling Bane flank coming in. Cyril just decides to fight like a mad dog. A few of these bio units do get saved, but there's not space for everyone in those medevacs. Marines in the bottom right still denying a sixth base being taken in the bottom right. So Cyril says, okay, I'll take the gold base. Vehicle armor's on the way. Four Marauders building at a time. Three, three concussive shells. Nice hot pickup on the right side. Uh, more command centers are being built now as well. I love to see this from Clem. So he's going to take a fifth base and he's got a sixth and seventh command centers, which will probably be orbital command centers. Nidus Worm's on the way though. That Lurker Nidus action will start soon. After game one, I think Clem will be ready, very prepared for it. Clem may be looking down the road of a hard comeback in this series, but you know what? If anyone can do it, it's him. I've seen him make crazy comebacks for Serral before. Hydraling Bane pulling to the south. Ooh, okay, we've got Seismic Spines on the way, plus one range. Four Ghosts being built at a time. Serral's going to take a seventh base in the top left. As the Ghosts come out, I think Clem is uh, very well set up. He just says, you know, I'm maxed. I'd like to see a second star point. Uh, yeah, yeah, he ain't going to be letting these Nidus Worms pop. Not this time. Two Vikings and a turret shut it down. He should be going up here straight away with these Vikings. Yeah, he has. So there's no way Serral gets big damage here. Clem immediately stims to clean up the Nidus Worm. And the Vikings should be moving to that right side. Great play there by Clem. He's going for a second starport, a fusion core, and extra commands. And his keep on being added. Clem's happy to slow down and set himself up for the lake. And he's got to watch out for the parasitic bombs, though. That one might have been worth an abduct. But there was only three Hydras, though. Not a lot to actually shoot down an abducted unit. Great. Baneland connection gets quite a few of these units. Hmm. Not cheap for Serral. He's down 4,000 resources in the units lost. A lot of his Banelings got expended. Spire's on the way. He's going to be thinking about a Broodlord swap. Serral pops another Nidus Worm. This one's just to position a frontal attack. Good idea, knowing the Vikings are stopping you get in the back door. Ooh, Baneling connection. Gets a few Ghosts, Marines, and Marauders. Widowmine's firing mostly on the Zergans. Great move by Serral. Really good move. Getting a decent fight here. Chasing on top. And finally, Clem. Oh, he's forced to pick up there. Lurker Viper coming in on this side. He's going to try and snipe uh, some of these units, but the Lurkers do disable the initial snipe. Any damage breaks the snipe from completing, guys. It takes 1.43 seconds to complete. And you can see a couple snipes do go down. The Lurkers damaged, but not dead. Clem's taking a lot of damage. He's going to need to repair that command center. Oh, he's kind of running in and out right now. Seems a little bit panicky in his control. The Banelings are going to go for the Boom Boom. Banelings going for the repairing SCVs, but great pullback on the Workers by Clem. He goes back for the repair. He tries to come forward. New Banelings go in. Planetary does go down. Serral expends a lot of units to do it, but I think it's absolutely worth it. Snipes do take down one of those Lurkers. On the right side, Bio Ghost pulling behind the Mineral Line. Planetary here as well. Serral. Oh, no, 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 no. If he gets both of these, that's massive. Serral takes out the fifth and the sixth base, a fourth and the fifth base at the same time. Clem desperately needs to get them back up. He's got to land this base and get a planetary in front of it. But losing those command centers is massive. Several is rich. He's on 85 workers and he says, I know what my win condition is. I just got a big win. Let's do it again. Clem needs to leave his army split 50-50. Half on the right, half on the left. I think there's an argument, guys, that he should never have taken this base. And instead, he should have taken fourth on the right, fifth on the gold. Could have had his defenses half here. And then just a few units on that left because it's so much harder to get in this natural than it is in this base. This base is quite far spread. But since he's committed to it, he needs to split the army 50-50. He's doing a good job of it. Mostly ghosts on the left. That's a giant ghost army on the left. While it's a pack of bio, a liberator, and a few mines on the right. But this is a huge army for Serral on the right side. So Serral's actually just only got a few lurkers there. I love the reposition for Clem. Moving down that right. If he can defend the next wave, he's good. But he doesn't have a planetary. His units are pre-spread de spread decently. Watch out for the Widow Mines. Widow Mines taken out before they can shoot. Second Widow Mine gets a big hit. There's so many Banelings, though. I don't know if it's going to matter. So many Banelings rolling forward. My god, that is a lot of Zerg. That being said, there's no plan. Oh my god, he doesn't spread his ghosts. He just stopped spreading. 
A very unclam moment there. A lot of ghosts just went down. He has lost 16 ghosts this game. That's so uncharacteristic for him to lose so many ghosts there. Widowmine does fire on one of these lurkers, but they're going to get in on top of that base. His bases are still up and mining, but he needs a planetary. This needs to morph into a planetary or put one in front. He also needs to defend that top left. Clem is on the ropes right now. Serral did lose a lot of overseers, so he's building 10 overlords to make sure he never gets supply blocked again in this game, even if he loses more overseers. That's a clever move because he's got to keep the momentum up. Serral must strike while the iron is hot. Serral does not have a bank. Serral does not have 100 drones. Serral does not have some magic game-winning tech. He's only now building the burrow, the infestors. He doesn't have burrow. He's got to keep going now. If he can kill this section again before the planetary's up, that'll be massive. Parasitic bomb on the Viking. Widowmine does big friendly fire. The Ling Bane Hydra jumping in on top. Lings are in the mineral line. That planetary, is he going to focus it? He's going to start focusing it now. Nice move. Cancel and lift for Clem. But there's no way he can repair that in time. The Ling Bane... Oh, or can he? Maybe he can. Bainley's going after the ghost again. Good spready from Clem reactively. 16 workers, 17 workers go down though. Serral gets a fantastic trade. Serral is only buying 3,000 resources lost in this game. And you know what? Clem only has a few orbitals, guys. He's got six orbitals now, which is a good count, but he's desperately trying to make more. He needs planetaries. That should be a planetary on the left. This should be a planetary on the right. He's trying to remorph that right now. But remember, they take a long time to get up. Clem needs to survive on five base. If he can just survive a bit longer, get back to 75 workers and stabilize. He can definitely do this, but he has to be wary. Clem in there with changelings. SCV is dealing with those nicely. Greatest buy is on the way. Serral thinking about a Broodlord swap. New Nidus Worm pops up inside Clem's back door. Clem reacts pretty quickly. He knows it's there and he will send some units back, but he doesn't have many units nearby. Clem's still far from maxed out. He's in a very dangerous scenario. Popping units out of here would be super risky. Two libs and two mines on top of it. <clears throat> He's building more marines and ghosts right now. He's very low on marauders. I'd like to see a few more marauders in the mix personally. Oh, Planetary does get a few decent shots on those lurkers, but they get behind the mineral line. Oh my god, did he pull his whole army? Clem's whole army pulled to the left and into the natural for the Nidus Worm. Oh no, he left only a few ghosts and marauders here. The planetary gets blown up. Luckily, he doesn't lose any workers. So you know what? It's expensive blowing up planetaries, but he's still losing mining behind that third base. Such a big bummer. Fourth base, I guess. Fifth base. Whichever one it is. He's, lo he's losing mining. He does clean it up. Clem needs to get another planetary up. I, I, in this turtle scenario, I feel like tanks are god tier. But that is not Clem's style. I've talked to Clem about it. I said, why don't you build tanks? He says, you can do it. You just need to play really well to make this style work. And I understand I'm kind of expecting perfection for myself. But I really feel this is the better style if you play as, as, you know, as well as you possibly can. Unfortunately, he's lost his detection. The Infest is coming in. Nidus Worm does finally get deflected. How is he spotting for these? He's got an Overseer in the, the main as well. Oh my god, the amount of distraction is massive. No, 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 no! Fungal lands! A big fun- Oh, nothing to capitalize. The Banelings are a little far behind. Okay. Serral jumps the gun on that one a little bit. Great parasitic bombs. But the Fungal, the Banelings weren't close enough to support it. Uh, is going to snipe the Overseer on the right side of the main. Banelings roll in again. Another Fungal came in. Oh my god, you cannot lose this mineral line. Clem needs to get back to the front lines. There's several creating so many distractions with the Nidus Worms. And look at this. Oh my god, he's taking out all of those units. He's going to throw a Nidus Worm to either reinforce or maybe even to evacuate. He starts trying to focus down Liberators as they try to siege on top of him. Clem is in disarray. You can tell that Clem is kind of thrown off his game at this point. He is just not able to keep up with the pressure, the positioning of Serral. Add to that the Burrow Infestors, the Baneling Waves. The Lurk is now popping out on that right side behind that worker line. The SCVs are cleansed. Infestor on the left side there as well. Bio moving to that right side. Command Center has to lift. My god. Serral is on another level today. The Infestor pops up to fungal him. And Clem types. Good game. Good luck. An absolutely devastating array of attacks. And Clem just wasn't quite able to after being down 0-2 and being hammered by Serral. I do think his confidence had taken a little bit of a hit. And he did fail to re-establish control of these bases after Serral blew them up. When Serral blew up the bases on both sides here at 14 minutes, I felt like Clem was just a little bit too slow to re-establish himself. And then there was like the moment when the Nidus Worm popped up and he just didn't send units to kill it. And then he sent like his, a whole lot of units from that right side. I, I think he, he should have been able to stabilize. But just hats off to Serral, man, for... The mixture of Nidus Worms in the back, attacks on the right, attacks on the far left, using his mobility, 
uh, you know, it was like, hey, the two Vikings shut down the Nidus Worms. So I was like, fine, I'll just pop it out front and seed you from there. And this was just an excellent series. The way he played this was so, so very well done. And I think for me, especially surprising that he did it with no 15-15, no tricky openings, and no Ling Bane, uh, sorry, no Roaches in, in this whole series. I feel like over the last year, Serral almost always plays Roaches versus Clem in most of his games and has the most success with Roaches. But today, it was Ling Bane. But it was such clever anti-Widow Mine micro, always defusing them really well. That's one of the few exceptions. But amazing Ling Bane run buys. This game, he just constantly got himself in the front. And if I had to wager, I would wager that Clem was in panic mode from the first five minutes. And do you know, do you know why? It's because I can see this because he didn't split up his defense as well as he could have. He took forever to deal with these lurkers that kept doing runbys on the left. He took forever to deal with his later Nidus Worm in the natural. And he kept pulling too many of his units to each position and not leaving enough on the right. Now, what do I think threw his heart rate up so high and made him not calm? It was the Ling Runbys. Remember, Cyril did four Ling Runbys in the first like six, seven minutes of this game. This is the first one that finally got defended. But he, he was very non-stop on that Ling pressure. And I think he took the wind out of Clem's sails. Clem, if he gets going, he's hard to stop. Serral never let him get going in this series. And this game was the perfect example where right from, I think it was four minutes, his first Ling run by went in. After the third and fourth Hellion moved out across the map, remember? He basically had those Lings waiting on the left, waits for his moment. The Overlord sees those Hellions leave and these Zerglings wait a few seconds and go in. And then the fact that he followed this up again with another Ling run by about a minute after that, right when Clem gets back in control of the game, Serral takes that control away. Expert play by Serral. And even though he didn't get a tangible economic or overall supply advantage from this, he wasn't way ahead or anything like that. He put Clem in a more defensive mindset. Like I said, it kind of does psychological damage. Clem is naturally like, oh, I have to defend more. Oh. And he's just not got that confidence because he's constantly getting surprised and pulled back to deal with your BS. Hats off to Serral. He played a very smart series and he executed really well under pressure. Clem played a good series. I don't think he played bad. I just think it's really hard to play your best when you're playing against this version of Serral that is so annoying. GG, well played. Honestly, this is just insane. After Clem won Atlanta, well done, Serral. I think Serral probably played the best tournament of his life at this event. And the fact that he got this 3-0 dismantling is just a fantastic example of why. He only lost one map in this entire tournament. Just ridiculous play, man. GG.